Good afternoon, saints. Um, this video, I'm going to talk about what fundamentalism is and why you should be a fundamentalist. Now, the word fundamentalism, um, it has a lot of different meanings and it means a lot of different things to a lot of believers. So a lot of believers are don't, don't seem to be aware of what fundamental is. And I think most believers that don't know what fundamentalism is, they have this view of like believers dressed in a suit and tie, um, carrying King James uh, Bibles, and where women wear skirts and just sing piano and hymns. That's not what fundamentalism actually is. Uh, fundamentalism has nothing to do with dress. It has nothing to do with uh, the worship style of music. It has nothing to do with the King James uh, Bible. And to really understand what fundamentalism is, you have to kind of understand what the history is. And the so I'm just going to read off of uh, this book by uh, Paul Smith, The New Evangelicalism, The New World Order. And um, I'm, just, I'm not going to read the entire chapter because it's kind of long. Um, so he talks in this chapter the Paul Smith talks about um fundamentalism within the West uh Minster Theological Seminary and also the um Princeton Theological Seminary but I'm not going to read that um what I want to read is just some uh sections here of this chapter so you can grasp what fundamentalism is and um why it had to happen and it took root and so I'm just going to read here in the beginning of this chapter. So this is chapter 4 on page uh, 45, and it's called The Battle Between Modernism and Fundamentalism. So the beginnings of theological modernism, also called liberalism, had its root in Europe. Germany was the birthplace of higher criticism, which was 19th century skeptical humanistic thinking applied to the Bible. With the dawn of the scientific era, many thought we were on the verge of discovering the secrets of the universe and unlocking the ability to understand and solve every problem of mankind. Anti-Christian thinkers such as Darwin, Hegel, Marx, and Lenin began leading movements to dethrone God and replace him with scientific humanism. Christian biblical fundamentalism responded to this liberalism and by the 1920s, found itself under full-scale attack. Liberalism was spreading through many of Americans' historic seminaries, mainline church denominations, and into our pulpits. In 1924, H.L. Mencken remarked, Christendom may be defined briefly as that part of the world in which if any man stands up in public and solemnly swears that he is a Christian, all his auditors will laugh. Walter Lippmann, who helped organize the Anti-Christian Intercollegiate Socialist Society in 1905, became the Society's President of the Harvard Chapter and later wrote weekly articles from Time Magazine. He was also Director of the Council on Foreign Relations. In his book, Preface to Morals, he wrote, A religion of the modern world is radical to the degree for which there is, I think, no count counterpart. Joseph Crutch, in referring to the death of religion, said, Both our practical morality and our emotional lives are adjusted to a world that no longer exists. So that's really what fundamentalism is in a very, like, I guess you could say in a nutshell. So fundamentalism arose because of the this poison of liberalism, that was really where it took root was in Europe, specifically in Germany, in the, uh, in the academies, the academic world of Germany back in the 1800s. So that was really the birthplace of what's, you know, the, of higher criticism. Um, so what it started doing was uh, the liberal th theology, you could say liberalism, excuse me, really uh, was questioning the bible you know was does the bible is the bible really reliable is it really inerrant is it really infallible did miracles really happen so that's what liberalism is it started taking its roots from um germany and you know the birthplace of higher criticism 
It really is, as, it, as the author said here, which was 19th century skeptical humanistic thinking applied to the Bible. So that's what it is in a nutshell. It's pretty much just doubting the Bible because it doesn't make sense in our rational minds. Therefore, we have to reject it because it just doesn't make sense. So that's where that took place. And that started spreading and it eventually made its way overseas to the U.S. So that started to creep into churches, specifically in mainline denominations, such as the Presbyterian Church, um, the Episcopal uh, Anglican Church, um, Methodist Church, uh, the Church of Christ. Those are all big mainline denominations. That's where it had its root. And eventually those... Uh, it started to spread not only just that, but in other denominations that were outside of the mainline churches, and then eventually into uh, non-denominational churches. And liberalism is still alive today; it hasn't gone away. It's like a disease; it just it just spreads and starts to kill. Um, but as a result of that, um, Christian fundamentalism rose. So fundamentalists, what really took place, it was in the 1920s. So fundamentalists uh, started to rise and uh, combat and fight against liberalism. So the fundamentalists were the believers who started defending the Bible, defending biblical truth. So fundamentalism has nothing to do, as I said, with dress or worship style of music or whatever other weird belief that believers think it has to do with biblical truth so fundamentalists are defending biblical truth against these false um, attacks from um, liberalism liberal theology so fundamentalists started defending the deity of christ his virgin birth miracles in the bible um, they started defending these core fundamental doctrines that all believers hold to and defend all believers hold to these 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 core doctrines. This is part of the Bible. It's it's found in the Bible. So they were defending the scriptures. That's where this this word was coined at the time, fundamentalism. So if you defended the scriptures at the time, you were considered a fundamentalist. If you defended the core doctrines of the Bible, the fundamentals, the basics, you were a fundamentalist. You were coined a fundamentalist. So that's where that's come from. So it's not a bad word. And I wanted to read another snippet here. I'm going to read this little section, The Rise of Fundamentalism. So you kind of understand more in depth. So The Rise of Fundamentalism. The first layman reaction to unbelieving modernism came from the founders of the Union Oil Company of California. The founders were two brothers, Lyman and Milton Stewart. Between 1910 and 1915, they compiled and published a 12 paperback volumes consisting of 90 articles, sermons, and testimonials covering a wide range of subjects on biblical do or Bible doctrines, apologetics, cult groups, and more. Lyman Stewart described the authors at, at, as the best and most loyal Bible teachers in the world. So as a result, to combat fundamentalism, um, as you could see here, two laymen reacted to uh, modernism, the the liberal liberal theology that was creeping into churches. And it was these two brothers. Uh, they were founders of a Union Oil Company in California at the time. Um, they compiled uh, these. They were originally uh, like it said a twelve paperback volume, and they were actually distributed to many many churches and pastors at the time. So they can um, be armed against uh, the the attacks that were coming on the Bible from all different sides, from cults, from uh, uh, liberals who were attacking the uh, the core doctrines of the faith. So they came up with these paperbacks and distributed them by, by the thousands. And as a result of that, you can still get the book today, by the way. It's called The Fundamentals. And it's still... Uh, I think I forgot what publisher puts it out, but there's you could still buy it. If you go to Christianbook.com, you can still buy it. And in fact, it's actually a book I highly recommend every single Christian to own and have in their library. Um, but it is a book that still you can get. It's all compiled in one volume. It's not done anymore in the 12 paperbacks. But I'm going to continue reading. It's A.C. Dixon was hired as the first editor. And uh, as far as I know, A.C. Dixon was actually... Uh, 
he was a Baptist pastor um, at some point. But uh, just continue reading. Dixon was a well-known evangelist, author, and pastor of Moody Memorial Church in Chicago. Dixon was followed by Reuben A. Torrey, and they gathered articles from the from conservative Christian authors in America and Great Britain. Uh, just to keep in mind, fundamentalism, the fundamental uh, doctrines that was the the booklets that they compiled were done from various various believers of many many different denominations. Um, a lot of these guys had different opposing theological positions. A lot of them were dispensationalists. A lot of them were um, Calvinist, uh, Reformed guys. But they united in order to f- oppose a common enemy. And the common enemy was uh, liberal theology. Liberal theology that denied the, you know, the core fundamental doctrines of our faith. So I'm going to continue... So title, The Fundamentals, they were distributed freely to Christian workers in the United States and 21 foreign countries. They were available to every pastor, missionary, theological professor, seminary student, YMCA and YWCA secretary, college professor, Sunday school superintendent, and religious publication editor in the English-speaking world. This amounted to some 3 million copies. Later, R.A. Torrey edited the papers into a four-volume hardcover set, and another 300,000 copies were distributed. And in 1998, Baker Books reprinted them. The articles defended the infallible inspiration of the Bible, justification by faith, the new birth, the deity of Jesus Christ, his virgin birth, miracles, and resurrection. Not only did the fundamentals address the heresy of modernism, but also Mormonism, Romanism, Socialism, and other cult groups. Some of the contributors included W.B. Riley, James Gray, G. Campbell Morgan, H.G.C. Uh, Mule, James Orr, A.T. Pearson, Thomas Spurgeon, J.C. Ryle, Philip Maru, W.H. Griffith Thomas, B.B. Warfield, R.A. Torrey, and others. At the turn of the 20th century, numerous groups holding firm to biblical fundamentals organized. Some had separated from the modernist movement, holding fast to biblical inerrancy. Sorry. Many of, uh, sorry, many continued to enjoy the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and were launching revivals in the United States, Wales, and soon around the world. The movement included Pentecostals, holiness groups, independent fundamentalists, and many of the black churches. The Assemblies of God began revivals in Topeka, Kansas, and were rapidly growing throughout the U.S. and Canada. The Church of the the Nazarene encouraged unity among the holiness groups, and a number of independent holiness churches merged into a single fellowship in Chicago. The Nazarenes and Wesleyan Methodists drew together many of the holiness movement's independent churches. In 1908, there were newly established fundamentalist groups in Canada, India, Cape Verde, and Japan, soon followed by works in Africa, Mexico, and China. By 1915, mergers added congregations in the British Isles, Cuba, Central, and South America. There were also congregations in Syria and Palestine by 1922. In the 1920s, the International Church of the Foursquare Gospel became established in Los Angeles, about the time of the Azusa Street outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The World Conference on Christian Fundamentals, a gathering of over 6,000 attendees in Philadelphia in 1919, further advanced the cause of fundamentalism. 42 of the 48 states were represented, including the six Canadian provinces. Speakers included Lewis Berry Chafer, R.A. Torrey, Paul Rader, C.I. Schofield, W.H. Griffith Thomas, and James Gray, resulting in a published book titled God hath spoken. The preface states, We believe in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament as verbally inspired of God and inerrant in the original writings and that they are of supreme and final authority in faith and life. So that's uh, more in detail of what fundamentalism is. So fundamentalism is actually very important. And you can find fundamentalists in... Many, many different denominations, uh, even in non-denominational churches. Um, 
Fundamentalism is what every Christian should be because if you're a fundamentalist, you defend and believe the ba the basic fundamental doctrines, which are the deity of Christ, his virgin birth, his resurrection, miracles in the Bible. These are all fundamentals that every Christian holds to and believes. Um, if they're a Bible-believing church, then you will hold to these. So every Christian should be a fundamentalist. The other spectrum of this is liberalism, which really had its roots in um, 18th century or 1800s Germany, Europe, with the skepticism that came from the, the academic world, the higher academies, because they just couldn't believe in a spiritual book, supernatural spiritual book, which is God's word. So this poison is still fighting. It's now under the title of New Evangelicalism. And um, many, uh, many of the former fundamentalist seminaries, like, for example, Fuller Seminary, which at one point was actually a fundamentalist seminary started by Charles E. Fuller, became, now it's like full-blown, like, uh, liberal. Um, it's pretty sad how some of these seminary schools started off fundamentalist, and eventually Satan planted a seed of liberalism and infected it. And once the, it's very difficult to push liberalism once it gets into a seminary or Bible college. But, I mean, if you want, if you're in a seminary or Bible college, you need to make sure that your school is really holding to the fundamentals of the faith and hasn't been in any way, shape, or form tainted by liberalism. Um, but every believer should be a fundamentalist. Uh, it is... Defending biblical truth, just remember that fundamentalism has to do with defending biblical truth, the fundamentals of the faith, which is what believers in the early 1920s got together to defend. What they're really defending was the Bible against uh, the liberal heretics who were opposing the scriptures. They were opposing God. They were not for God. These guys were used by Satan to attack scripture. So... Um, that is what fundamentalism is, as I just read. And, I mean, if you want to get the entire book for yourself, you can get New Evangelicalism by Paul Smith, and it's forward by Pastor Chuck Smith, which is, um, they were brothers. Uh, so, like I said, I re also recommend the, the Fundamentals book. Uh, you can get it at christianbook.com. So, Thank you for watching and God bless.